Welcome, everybody, to episode 14 with Ro Turpin with Brandon, Russell, and Paul. I saw that look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because you pointed. If you wouldn't have pointed, it would have been okay. <laughs> Today is Sunday, um, March 4th. 5th. 5th. 5th? Oh, baby Jesus. Yeah. Sunday, March 5th, and this is and this is God's day. It's always God's day. Who do you think came up with... Uh, like the weekends and weekdays, like when was that a thing? Oh, it was from the beginning of time, bro. God rested on the Sabbath. Oh, really? When he was, was like making in... the earth, when he was making the world. Oh, so in the Bible, he yeah. gave he gave a weekend. Yeah, he like he stopped one day to just like chill and be cool. And he's like, this will be the day of worship, and like we're just gonna be <clears> chill this day. Nobody gonna do any work. We're gonna be awesome. I don't remember that Bible verse. <laughs> the uh, ancient ba- Babylonians day. came up with the seven day week. Ah. Mm. Because I know if I were to like, if I was God and I made like a, uh, like the timeline, like weekends and weekdays, I would have done like two on and two off, like two weeks of twelve hour shifts and then like two weeks off. That's painful. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not bad. Like two, twelve, two weeks, twelve hour shifts, no uh-huh. days off, and then you have two whole weeks off. That's like a little vacation. Dude, that I'm would allow everybody to travel more. Why not just a four day work week? Like Monday through Thursday, and then you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Yeah. But you would have to work like some twelve-hour shifts in between there no, 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 to make no. up those hours. It would only be ten-hour shifts, maybe. Ten. To, well, actually, it might be twelve hours. I don't know. Whatever. Why not just a four-day work week, and you don't work the forty hours? Hold we on. just work less time. I don't know. I don't know why. Why we always have to be forty hours? Like. Yeah, who came up with 40-hour work weeks? An idiot. That's, that's a good question. Somebody, somebody, somebody who believed that we needed 40 hours to accomplish everything throughout the week. Somebody which is wrong because I work at a super speedy pace. If I know what I'm doing. Well, they didn't account for uh, a whole bunch of fatties sitting around behind a computer. Uh, I mean, that was uh, the 40-hour work week was made what, 80 years ago. Right. Uh, back when everybody had manufacturing jobs and exactly. uh, people were working so, like so it was slaving for away, like, uh, blue collar, white yeah. collar mm-hmm. guys like yeah. in there. Exactly. Yeah. So back when people worked ninety hours a week, uh, forty hour week uh, was good. introduced. Um, I mean, eight, to bring eight. some normalcy. But now we got robots and computers doing most of our work. So right. I think it's high time we uh, reinvent. Maybe scale it back to, to like, like twenty hour, maybe like, like six hours a day, instead of eight eight hours a day. If eight you think hours about a day it, is retarded. It's like, too long. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Your productivity. You're you're most productive in the morning. I yes, I hundred percent uh, agree with that. And then after lunch, no I'm one, useless. No one's accomplishing anything. Agreed. Very true. Very. True. Like once I eat lunch, like I'm done. I mean, I I get on the toilet, I start playing some games, I might take a nap on my phone for a little bit. I don't go that far. But it's just after lunch, man. Like, that's why the Mexicans are so useful, because, like, they take their siestas. i got to stand up for this podcast. This, guy, this might be the first one I ever do this, but I just can't take to sit down anymore. But, uh... Then why do Mexicans have siestas? When did that start? Like, why do you think it started? I think they just have work a different lifestyle. They're just a little bit more relaxed than we are here. They're realists. Like, everybody wants to take a nap during well, like, the middle of the day. <laughs> let me, like, let me say not? something about the Mexican economy, though. Is it anywhere near as good as the American economy is, though? Uh, Mexican? What about Brazilians? Do Brazilians take naps? You think? think or you think all worse. South America does? I think it's probably just like a south of the border thing. Yeah, so I'm thinking. I'm thinking Brazil does. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised because I heard Brazil has like a really good economy, or as far as gas or something like that, like oil, oil and gas. Well, like Brazil has the, like the they best do have economy. A, they have a lot world. of it, but I wouldn't say they're as good as the United States is. I no, mean, they're they're but they're struggling. Are you struggling joking? Now. They're struggling. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, Brazil, Brazil has ga- oil and gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they're like, like not a whole okay, lot though. They have like the biggest discrepancy we can between the rich and the poor. Well, I'm not saying they have the best economy. I'm just saying they have the resource. You think it's about, like, drugs? Like No, I think it's just... Corruption. Corruption, yeah. Uh, Yeah, as as far as Latin, South American countries go, they're they're up there in corruption. Yeah, along with, I believe, Colombia as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they still have a lot of issues there, but... uh, mm. Dude, I feel you. If you were stuck on a desert island, Mm -hmm. like Castaway Desert Island, like no cell phone service, no nothing, 
and you had to choose between me and Paul, who would you take and why? Mm. Think about that. Between you and Paul? Desert Island, hot as fuck, crashed the airplane. He's, he's got less butt hair, so I'd probably... <laughs> <laughs> probably take, I'd yeah. probably take you because you could withstand the elements longer. Paul would be like burnt to a crisp. Yeah, I'd yeah. be sitting in the shade. <laughs> he'd, be pretty, he'd be pretty useless after the sun got a hold of him. I can imagine Paul like sitting in the shade for like six hours, and then he realizes like his sur- Brandon's survival something. is based on Paul's survival. So Paul would like <laughs> use some bamboo and banana leaves, and he would have some like permanent shade around him at all times, <laughs> just like tied to his back with some ghillie suit. Yes, yeah. he'd make a ghillie oh, suit yeah. out of like bamboo leaves. <laughs> I could but. totally see that. I don't know, man. Like, I'd just get hot and start complaining. I'd be like a girl if I was stuck on a desert island. <laughs> really? I mean, for the first 12 hours, for sure. <laughs> I would start, like, have you ever been, like, in a really shitty situation? And your first Tons, reaction Tons. isn't to cope with the situation. Your first reaction is to, to complain, complain about, like, why you're in the situation. You're like, God damn it. I knew oh, I, sh- sure. I should have made bacon this morning. That's if I would have made man. bacon, that would have been 15 more minutes to my morning. I would have missed this accident. I would have been in a whole different spot. I wouldn't have been in this traffic lane. I wouldn't have gotten into that accident. Ooh. That's me. Like, you know, I would have been on that island just, like, complaining about everything i didn't do to be i think that would last for about an hour with me just because i've been through so many situations where i realize complaining gets me nowhere like in my life like i think what was it i think after like my dad left my mom and i was left like that whole emotion went through my head then ever since then like anytime anything like that ever happens it lasts maybe an hour before i'm just like what do i got to do to make this better yeah, so you thought about it. You were like, maybe if I would have done this, you know, this, maybe he wouldn't have uh, left or whatever. Sometimes, but after a while, you just get over it and you're just like, fuck it, what do I got to do to move on? Yeah. I mean, I do that with, like, simple stuff. Like, if I get into a car accident or I break my leg or something happens, like, you know, then I start replaying things back in my life. I'm like, dude, what if I would have called in sick to work today like I was going to originally or whatever like then maybe I wouldn't have gone to this accident but then I start thinking about it and then I'm like dude what if I would have done that then I would have died yeah. like there's too many what ifs <laughs> in that situation I'm not to get into a weird religious riff here but like do you, do you believe in like what is it like kind of like butterfly effect versus like there's a design plan for like what's going on in your life is this like one of those questions where it's like uh, there's two people there's two types of people in this world the type of people that Blah, 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 and the type of people that blah. You know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not going there. I'm just asking, no. do, you, do you think, like, do you think, like, part of your life is destined to fade, or do you think, like, maybe just because you picked a certain situation, something happened? Or, like, do you think there's somebody else pulling all the strings somewhere? And then just seeing how you react to them. I don't believe in either. I don't know. I just think that what I do is what I do. You know, I'm just... Living then, my life. And then what real. anybody else does is what everybody else does. Yeah, I'm just I'm just keeping it real, sure. It's just constant chaos. Yeah. Chaos theory. <laughs> is that what it's called? I don't know. It, I know chaos theory has another, like... I mean, if you believe your whole life is, like, predestined and predetermined and you were, you know, you were going to make that decision, even if you think about making that decision and you're going to make something else, that's yeah. because destiny said you were going to do that instead. Yeah, well, that's if you believe that aspect. But what I'm trying to say, though, <clears> is that you don't know what the destiny is. You just believe in destiny. Does that make sense? It's not about the journey, man. Yeah, like, you, like, you, don't, you, like you, don't, you can't see into the future, obviously, but sometimes you think you were predestined once you get to the future. You're just like, like, I was always destined to do this. But, I mean, that's like, I feel like, say, for instance, if you had, like, a really good life, that's something an asshole would say. Be like, I was destined to do this. Like, was I predestined to do this podcast? Like, was this going to happen? Like, this whole situation right now to this very moment? Yeah, why not? I mean, like. Wait, which one do you believe in? Oh, what, what do I believe in? I believe we made the proper choices to get us here. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I think. But I'm waiting for Paul's uh, crazy answer to his. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have anything now, crazy. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, the multiverse theory. I think uh, there's... Uh, yeah, I don't think we're predestined. I don't think... I'll speak for myself. I don't think I'm predestined for anything. I think... Uh, like your uh, decisions and like what you choose, Like, do you think they lead you to a certain place in this, like in time? Or is it like just... You know, you get to live your life, and whatever happens, happens. Hmm. You know, I. What's multi-universe? I really like the. Every every possible uh, outcome, 
there's a universe where uh, oh. there's a Brandon, Paul, and Russell. They don't know each other. Okay. There's a universe where uh, Brandon, Paul, and Russell, but they're not doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're on the yacht somewhere, sailing around the world. <laughs> so, like every universe. possible outcome, there's a universe where all three of us are dead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it can play out. So it's kind of like uh, that's really comforting theory. to me. I really like that idea. When that hit the scene a few years ago, I really responded positively to that. Cause that's like wow that's and every that's perfect universe, something something different every universe. okay so in this universe if we weren't doing this podcast and we never were friends what would i be doing right now on a sunday at, on like 9 30. would i be in houston would i be like chilling in an apartment if we were never friends let me think back because i would like to s i'd probably be married and miserable <laughs> Married and miserable. Dude, that's the only type of married there is. <laughs> <laughs> one million dollars. Could I chop your pinky off right now? Which one, right or left? Either or. You choose the pinky, but I get to take it, but one million dollars is yours. The whole pinky? Whole pinky. Whole How pinky. many phalanges? Yeah. I'm taking it right there so you don't even, like, have nothing. Like So no, no nub. No nub. Not a, not a clitoris stimulator. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> one million? Would you say yeah? One million? One million dollars. You let me take your pinky on live air. Yeah, I think so. Would, what do you do after? Cauterize it? Mm, I did Nope. That'd be just right here on this table. It just chops million off, million and after that, we're, and you, you get gotta to figure it out you on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get to, uh, do you drive me to the hospital, or? Do we gotta to drive, drive to the hospital? Myself? Oh, I'd probably drive you. I'm not, okay. I mean, at least Brandon would. Yeah, I'd drive you. <laughs> Somebody might drive you. I'm pretty sure. I'm thinking what I'd do if, if there was no hospital involved. I'd be like, all right, let me start the iron real quick. Okay, what about this? I chop your pinky off, $1 million, and you have to go to the hospital, but Brandon has to take you on the back of my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Hell to the nah. <laughs> to the nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Paul, you're probably going to die on the way there, just FYI. I'm pretty sure we could raise one million dollars to see that scene. Just like <laughs> next episode, episode fifteen, I just come out with whoppers, chunk. Like when you're not paying attention, I throw a million dollars on the table, helmet. and I'm like, all right, they're the keys. Good luck. <laughs> we got the GoPro already set up on the helmet, ready to record. I can just see Brandon get on the bike, like starting like panicking, and Paul's like bleeding everywhere, just like <laughs> gushing out. What if like all the what if all that panic <clears throat> focused me somehow? Like what if I just like. No, that'd be that'd be a great test to see how you handle. Pressure. You never know, like that could be an adrenaline dump yeah. that I need to actually focus. Like I, my mind could go into like hyperdrive because then it, it becomes important to me. I'm like my friends in pain. I gotta get them to the hospital. Dude, if any millionaires are out there listening to this, one million dollars, we can make the best movie in the world, like based on real life events. <laughs> 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 I would pay so much money for that. <laughs> well, how much do you think the hospital bill would be? Ah, uh, what like, like. Ten thousand with no insurance. No, like well, let's say we have insurance, so it doesn't matter. Have insurance. Yeah, but well, does insurance cover stupidity? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, so we're like probably paying for you're, it. You're paying outright, like whatever the oh. however oh. much it costs to bandage you up and kick you out the door. I'm talking in the real world here. Do you think like are do you think insurance would cover stupidity like that, <laughs> or do you think we'd have to pay outright? I mean, it's not a warranty. Like on, it's not like a warranty on your <laughs> finger. It's insurance, yeah. So it doesn't matter. If you chop your arm off, you go to the hospital, but, you have insurance. But does it count as insurance fraud? Oh, true yeah. that. Well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're in need of medical aid. It doesn't matter what. So. <laughs> it's not like I drop my phone. So there's not a can clause. Can you fix in my screen? So there's not it's a not clause a in there that says, like, wrongful injuring of yourself. So is that a yes? <laughs> Voids coverage because I'll aspect. put a thousand. I'll put a thousand towards that. So we only need nine hundred ninety-nine <laughs> more thousand. <laughs> that would be the greatest. A pinky, greatest podcast pinky. episode ever. And the whole time I get to drive my truck and film y'all like on the bike, like trying to get to the hospital, like no GPS on your phone. Man, I could like, never. I could never <laughs> do the rowdy ever again. Unless I did. I you still got another pinky. Yeah, I would. I would lose a pinky. Yeah. For, I, I mean, a dollar seems seems worth it. Oh, I would definitely lose. I mean, plus you get like more attention. You're at the bar. Drinking by yourself, some hot girl walks up to you, like, what happened to your pinky? You could never pinkies up whenever you drink. And you'd just be like, listen. You'd be like, Dustin, be gone. <laughs> you'd be like, listen to this story, girl. So I was doing this podcast, and my best friend chopped off my pinky because he bet a million dollars a week before. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, one good story. The, good story. Our one guys. of the sales guys at work, uh, Greg Womack, he's, uh, he used to be an uh, operator. And he's missing most of his pinky and a part of his ring finger. I never asked wow. him how it happened, but yeah, I mean, you can't, you don't even notice. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's a pinky. Uh, it's a million dollars. Until you, like, look at his hand, you're like, oh, right. okay. You're but even then, you stop missing caring. A if there's anybody that doesn't have a, an appendage that's listening to this podcast, they're probably so angry right now. They're like, million dollars for a pinky? Yeah, because they have nothing to show for it. Exactly. Sure. Like, nothing happened when I lost my hand back in nine. Yeah, so that's why I have to say yes. 61. Right. It's not yeah. like, uh, you know, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll make a new finger out of uh, connects. A million Skywalker pinky. Ooh, yeah. So I remember the first time, like, when we started being friends. Like, obviously, we played football together in, like, seventh grade. Like, we were all, like, on the same team, essentially. Uh-huh. Just different positions in a no-homo kind of way. But <laughs> I remember Paul coming up to me. I don't remember if I was, like, right before I got on the bus or at football practice. But Paul comes up, and he's like, dude, listen to this. He's like, <laughs> he dropped, like, a freestyle on me. Paul could drop a freestyle? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> he's like... Babies in the front, oh, babies, babies in, in the, the back. back, the babies petting squirrels, Squirrel. and the squirrels, squirrels are smoking crack. <laughs> I remember that line. Now that I brought that up, where the fuck did that come from? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> did you just come up with that one and you're like, dude, Russell's going to laugh at this. <laughs> I, I remember like, that phrase, but I don't remember where that came from. I also, thought you came up with that. No. No, that was Absolutely you. Absolutely not. That was totally you. Like, that was all you. I remember that. I think I think you told it to me first, and, like, I got on the bus, and then as soon as I got home, I, like, ran to Brandon's house, <laughs> and I was like, dude, listen to this. This is what Paul told me. <laughs> babies in the front, the babies in the back, the babies petting squirrels, and the squirrels Smoke are smoking crack. crack. I remember that line. I could have swore I made Paul, like, actually recite when we were in the middle of football practice one day because it was hot and the sun was out and I was a little delirious. And you needed to laugh at something. I, yes, I and, did. And I can remember the very first joke that Paul have ever has ever told. And I think it was, like, probably the last one he's ever told. That was back in seventh grade also. How do you get a Pokemon on a bus? I was like, how? And you're like, you Pokemon. you Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure I was getting on the bus and you were, like, pushing me on the bus, <laughs> like, poking me. <laughs> uh. 